Yep. Thank you, WWE, for building up my hopes and promptly squashing them right away. Oh, wait, but I'm here to be positive. And I will try to be positive because I have some power of positive stuff going on. Um, yeah, that's not copyrighted. But I'm the one, the only hobo Tom, and this day was far from positive. There was no hurricane party. I'd like to thank those of you that watched. My little kitty cat video. I don't know. Hopefully next hurricane there's something better. Because I was half not wanting to work today and just kind of coast through. Instead I had to wake up, go to work, re reopen the whole house, put stuff back where it should be. And I still have to go to Lowe's tomorrow and Kohl's. I need a brick couple of bricks the uh, feet of the grill broke so i have to prop it up on something if not it's weird and wobbly um coals for my friend's wedding gift and i could use some new steaks for my pitch back and get ready for a test on thursday i'm not looking forward to that <laughs> i don't think the boss likes the fact that i said my computer has coronavirus either <laughs> But that's okay. That was like the most, if that's the worst thing I say all day, I'm doing pretty good besides what I say about this show or primarily Monday Night Raw because it was weird. But first, let me give some shout outs. Sonny Bembo, you've already gotten too many shout outs, but I'm here to shout out you. Remember, in about a month, you will be facing. Enzo Amore to see who gets to fight for the Always Underweight Championship. So that should be interesting. Uh, so again, he's gotten his limits. He's in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. No more shoutouts. He just becomes a character. You too can become a character in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League like a few others have. Um, there are a few on the list that might get put on there soon. And then John Lopez. Um, Thank you, I guess, for putting that link in the comments. It's a comment, folks. Can't say bad stuff. You, sir, have won twice. I don't feel like getting that creative because you got that six count.
goes for Sayer. Now let's see how quick I can do this so I can clean up the kitchen a little bit. Some dishes to do, stuff to put away, take a shower, go to sleep, and just hopefully restart. Push him out of the with a pulp. The start was good. I like the fact that a hot start, they started with a wrestling match. Apollo Crews versus MVP. I guess Apollo Crews is back from Corona quarantine. This was actually a best match of the night um starts off classic collar and elbow tie up oh he's good mvp works him to the ground apollo crew is still in the tie works back up again it's always fun there was a brief glimpse some mma stuff in wrestling that's kind of fun in the ring it gives it that kind of real feel like the timothy thatcher stuff i mean him versus only lorkin that, I mean, minus the fact that they don't get busted open, that looks like near as legit you can get, like, without anyone, like, pouring out blood from their head. Um, Paul Cruz, yeah, he continues his little streak there. He just snaps suplex uh, to the arm bar. And then, let's see, the Hurt Business, so that's their name, pull out MVP. Because it looked like Apollo Crews was going to spear him or do something to him when, when MVP was on the A prime. Instead, he goes flying. And Apollo Crews, he has a suicide dive, takes out everyone. Commercial break. Then MVP eventually gets the advantage on the outside with Bobby Lashley's help. MVP. Uh, and hits the close on. That was pretty good, though. Because the camel clutch in the ropes. I always like it when the heels utilize the, their entire environment. That's always fun to, to watch. Um, however, Apollo Crews does an amazing cross body at the top rope. MVP goes in the corner for a big splash. Does Then he gets a spine buster. MVP eventually. He did something, but Apollo Crews counters it with that toss powerbomb. Impressive. This was a good match. Apollo Crews is now the unified U.S. champion. U.S.A. 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 And I'll tell you what, this was the best match of the show, I think. This was a solid cheeseburger match. Oh, I guess that was a good thing that I got done, is I cleaned up my video file. So I have a clean, fresh start for August. So in case there's another hurricane, maybe I can do better. Who knows? Maybe he, maybe I'll find clips of the best of show. You can never tell. I could have be fun. I have like a quick eight-minute best of show. Play yakety's, loop <laughs> yakety sacks throughout the whole thing. Whoa. Uh, Let's so see. Then it was who's got interviewed. And, like, there was, like, weird stuff going on. And there was supposed to be some new um, faction joining. There were five people, though. I don't think there's any faction that has five people. Although it is rumored that, that people from Evolve might be showing up into WWE. So WWE is splintering off, and uh, well, we'll get to that later. But Cruz got interviewed. He was so happy. MVP is blaming technical stuff. Kevin Dunn! Do your freaking job. And if there's people in black hoods hanging around the performance center, just call the cops. Is that easy? Again, the performance center and Full Sail University are probably the two most dangerous parking lots throughout the state of Florida. And that includes Bumtona Beach, folks. That's saying a lot. And parts of Jacksonville. Yeah. That's saying a lot. Um, so Sasha and Bailey got interviewed. Asuka 
During the interview, Asuka looks like she's just going to kill someone. Asuka's furious because Kairi Singh got beat up. Kairi Singh, happy for you, though. Then Shannon Baser comes out, clocks Sasha Banks. That could be good if they did it right. And KO's in the background by the new catering, which is like the old school garbage dumpster filled with ice and with waters. And I think what looked like it was a red can, but at a red top. So I don't know if they were the Rockstar energy drinks, but it looked like more energy drink-ish than, so than soda-ish. And just some water, because this is a soda can. Well, I don't have another can, but... Kevin Owens needs his energy drink. God knows so those poor people that have to watch this show. Um, the comics talk to him a little bit. Yeah. And for the Kevin Owens show, it's Ruby Riot. And he talks to Ruby Riot, and then he invites Liv Morgan out. Aww. They, they have their little makeup session. And then the... I. I Codex show up. I have to fix that door too. And vacuum. One day. Oh, I have to make that. I have to start that too tomorrow. Tomorrow I go live. So I have to make the two matches I know for Impact Wrestling tomorrow. It gets me a little head start. Um. Then the I I Codex slap. The taste out of Kevin Owens. Oh, he's just like, ladies, just, just go have at him. So then this leads to our next match. It's the Riot Squad versus the Iconics. The Riot Squad. Uh, Ruby Riot. She gets double teamed a lot by the Iconics. Um, Peyton Royce gets in. Wow. The Iconics have great tag team work. They have great tag team continuity. Again, the uh, series of double... of. Double kicks they do to Ruby Riot is pretty good. Liv eventually gets a hot tag. Um, she jumped. She did a nice jump up missile drop kick. So she went from ring to bottom rope to middle rope to missile drop kick. That's good. Liv is probably one of the most improved wrestlers I've seen probably since Carmella. Carmella's. Amazing. She has the move set. She has the character work. She has the lungs to work a match. Liv Morgan's a little on the quieter side, but that can be forgiven. It only stands out because this is the no audience era. This is a coronavirus era. So there's no audience members, so all the wrestlers kind of have to make their noise themselves. Well, there was a lot of piped in noise, and you can tell because 20 people are not going to make that loud of a booing sound. Wow, that was a yummy salad I had, too. A salad with some baked fish or fried fish. That was good. I knew that a healthy amount of roughage in my system. I haven't had enough of that lately. What am I having? Having pierogies and sausage. So that will be good. But, uh, and then the Liv did a roll-up onto Billy Kay. And wow, the Riot Squad win. Liv gets the pin. Um, gets beat up for her efforts, though. Peyton Royce and Billy Kay still are the loudest people. Thank you, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, for we are not worthy to, to listen to your loud voices and to see your, your very ample booties. Uh, Ruby Wright makes a save. Uh, Liv. Ruby Wright then holds the ropes for Liv. Liv does the same thing for Ruby Wright. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Do we have to see what happens next week? Yeah, these two are pretty good. This was a kind of shortish match. They could have gone longer. They could have let it breathe a little bit. Give it a little more oomph. Overall, it wasn't bad. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Then Kale's in the back, and she finds an open box. Someone's just sloppy about the rework. Uh, Drew McIntyre gives a promo. Randy Orton, the two two shoot on each other. Oh, wow. Those two are such amazing talkers. Uh, Ric Flair says, KO, hey, listen, watch yourself. Then little Nia Jax promo. She beats up Ginger-headed boss. Um, R-Truth gets chased by the ninjas. 
Because he stole the belt. That's not good. And this leads us to a triple threat match for the 24-7 championship. I do like the fight. The, I do like the fact that they have this as a match. I can live with that. And it was R-Truth versus Shelton Benjamin versus Tazawa. R-Truth, again, he gets a hot start being up Shelton Benjamin. Tazawa was very smart. It's very cagey. He goes out, sneaks out, lets the two guys beat each other up. Um, eventually, he gets back in. Art when I think Shelton Benjamin is there, tries to do ninjutsu. I think that's how you do it. I've something like that ninjutsu magic. Yeah, it didn't work that well. Shelton Benjamin was, was like he just looked like he annoyed him. Um, Our truth came in for his little comeback. The ninjas show up. When ninjas show up, ninjas get beat up by the hurt business. And then while Shelton Benjamin is Occupied by ninjas, and our truth is beat up. He's laying there down. Um, Tazawa does, I'll tell you what, an amazing looking senton. I mean, he jumped up before he came down. That was amazing looking. Tazawa, Tazawa's a really good talent. I don't know why everyone poo poos him. I think he's happy he's on TV. He's getting paid piles of money. He's doing what he loves to do. He's, he, Tazawa reminds me of that individual. He's like, they're paying me to do this? Of course I'll do it. So it all works out for everyone at the end. Only thing that matters. Um, Tozawa is the new 24-7 champion. I'll tell you what, it was a decent ham sandwich of a match. Then we have Shane McMahon's back. And this looked like it was going to be good. Until the very end. And we'll get into that. Then there was a Seth Rollins recap. Dominic's been honing his promo skills. Dominic has been going over promo 203 with his dad, I think. Props to Dominic for his stuff. Uh, then Shayna Baszler. Then our next match is Shayna Baszler versus Sasha Banks. For that receipt for that punch that... Yeah, obviously Sasha rolled with. Because it did not look that good. Um... But in this match, Sasha, she just slaps the wrong person. Don't slap Shayna Baszler. Although Shayna Baszler is surprisingly old, but she has a young-looking face, though. Uh, I don't know if it's... Could be the dark hair. So especially in Florida, blonde-haired women do not age well. But, yeah, Shayna Baszler looks younger than 40, though. Which is weird. She, I think she I think she's either 39 or 41. So she's so she's right there. She looks a lot younger though. Again, I don't think she's been in MMA as long, and she hasn't been in wrestling taking like the crazy bumps. Styles do matter. Just ask the Miz. Miz has been here forever. Um, Shayna, Shayna Baszler, however, was watching the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League because she learned how to do the Hobo Breaker. Oh, that was awesome to see. Hobo breaker, hobo breaker, hobo breaker. It's a tiger bomb transition right into an armbar. I call it the hobo breaker. Um, so that was good to see. Uh, Sasha then works over Shayna's arms. That's not going to do anything. Again, twists them in the ropes, stretches them in the ropes. Um, Shayna again with a back breaker that looked nasty. See, I don't know if it's the wrestlers have these moves look nasty because it only seems to be on Sasha or if Sasha just doesn't bump right. I don't know. But, like, there are a few instances where it looks like Sasha Banks is going to concuss herself or, like, just break herself in two for some reason. And Sasha Banks is looking extra tan, which is weird because she's getting... A hairline like I have too, which is not good at her age. She and I understand. She's 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 getting to be my age. But Sasha Banks is a lot younger than me, though. and the blue doesn't really help that much. Uh, let's see here, what else? Uh, Shayna Baszler did get caught in a bank statement. I reversed that, put her into the rear naked choke, the Carafini clutch, rear naked choke. Same thing, same difference. And Asuka came out. And Asuka <laughs> attempted murder on 
bail on Bailey. And for some reason, the bell rang. And I guess Shayna got DQ'd. I don't quite understand why the ref rang the bell if it was going on the outside. I understand once Asuka came in and started and tried to beat up Sasha Banks. That I understand. But if Asuka just wants to go over, just wants to work over Bailey, they should just let the match continue and, and like let him fight. I don't know. See, the thing is, I don't necessarily mind this. It's confusing because of, I guess, the WWE rules. But at least they're somewhat consistent for the most part. They're not like AEW refs. Because AEW refs don't, like, they, they like see stuff and just be like, okay, whatever. WWE, when the WWE refs see something, they're like, hey, I saw you do that. No, 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 no. Not happening under my watch. But, yeah, this match was short. It could have been a bigger, better build considering that I guess it's going to be the 22nd because it's two weeks from this Sunday. So that's the 9th, the 16th, and the 23rd. So they could have had a little bit more build. It was just short. I don't know. Something about it was just a can of soup. Nasca cuts a promo. Um, Shana comes in. Shayna wants Asuka because she wants Asuka to beat Sasha so that she can take on Asuka. So that Shayna can take on Asuka at SummerSlam, but that's probably not going to happen. They probably have to wait for the Royal Rumble for that because that's way too soon. Because then next week, um, Sasha says, Well, if you want to fight me, you have to go through my ha, best friend Bailey. So Sasha's reversing the things that Bailey did to her. That was pretty cool. Um, Angel Garza gave a flower to the Bachelorette. I didn't even know the Bachelorette was still a show. And then it's ten o'clock, so I'm like, "Oh, we're gonna have some some WWE Lucha Underground." And no, um, it was like literally they took the ropes off a ring, had random people do even faker MME moves in a wrestling ring. Bob Batunde showed up, and he, and he, like, beat up jobbers. This was not good. Yeah. It's like, Bob Batunde is like, okay, this is going to be cool. But then, like, you saw the moves he did, and it's like, they're just doing wrestling in a ring with the ropes in the basement. Not cool. And then they had um, go-go dancers there, too. Very, again, cringeworthy mid oddish Then we have the Street Profits. They were going to do one-on-one -on -one versus the members of Angel Garza and Andrade. Selena Vega was wearing some, some weird head thing. I know today is the start of something. I forget what it... What does it say on the calendar? Oh, it's some Canadian holiday. Who cares about Canadian holidays? Boo, Zelina Vega. Uh, but start off, Angel Garza taking on Montez Ford. Um, I'm sorry, I'm taking on Angela Dawkins. Ugh. Montez Ford's is ringside, and then weird shenanigans happens. Uh, Dawkins, he gets beat up by Garza, then Dawkins beats up Garza, and we do a little back and forth. Um, I, missed the, I missed the end of the match because I got myself some dessert. Had some brownie cookies and a nice yummy soda. And I don't know what happened, but Montez Ford got pinned. Angel Garza wins. It was really short, though. I mean, if they're going to have these tag teams work, they should go to literally like the end of the show. But the end of the show was complete and utter garbage, with one exception, and I'll get into that. And it's not the Go-Go Girls either. Yeah, they were just like... Enhancement women's wrestlers. Not good. Um, so Angel Garza picks up the victory. Eh, whatever. It's a can of soup match. And then it's Montez Ford's turn. He goes in there against Andrade. 
for for the most part, he gets he gets jumped by Andrade, which is great. Andrade, that forearm, oh, so good. Then Ford begins to warrior up. Yeah, uh, gets after Andrade. Then he again the clotheslines. He goes flying out of the ring. Andrade's on the outside. Andrade. Um, Ford goes flying again, misses, and just like passes out. Or he doesn't even get, get to the rings. He just like passes out. And listen, I may make I might make fun of COVID nineteen. I might say banish people with COVID nineteen to Northern Idaho. But I also know there are treatments and cures, and unless you have like, and the biology, I know the biology of it. You get sick, you feel absolutely miserable. Um, I don't think my coworker did anything but like bed rest and fluids. Bed rest and fluids, like for most viruses, tend to be the way to go. I know they do have the vaccine. I think she got like that. She's been tested like five times. I'm not getting tested, period. Um, I know what the symptoms are. You lose your sense of smell, your sense of taste. Them onions tasted like onions. The I could smell the lemon in the tea. Um, the only chemicals I smelled was like some super chemical, like germ death spray we had at work. And I'm like, boss, that's supposed to smell like chemicals. She's like, yes, that's super chemical. It's like, good, because what's that lemony fresh stuff? It's like, oh, you smell the lemony fresh stuff? I'm like, she's like, you're fine. Um, the food I've been eating tastes amazing. Smells amazing, so I know I don't have that. I think the only time I sneeze is when I go out to do yard work. Makes sense. I think I was coughing a little bit because I had some granola. And there's always that one, like, oat that gets stuck somewhere. You know what I'm talking about, folks. So, so you cough a little bit, but seriously, it's like, well, you're coughing. Are you okay? I'm like, I just had a granola bar. She's like, oh, whatever. Um... Then if you're outside doing yard work and you come inside and like sneeze a few times. Here in Florida, there's plants all over the place, so that's normal. Um, I think I I think today I was petting my cat at work, gave her a kiss on her back, and I think I inhaled some cat fur and sneeze stuff. Again, normal basic stuff, but yeah, so this all Montez, it's getting tasteless. And for that reason, this match was a piece of toast. I kid because I care, but WWE doesn't care. Then it was a Seth and Murphy thing to go back to the Raw Underground. Eric is there. He beats up Jobber. It's just Jobber squash for people that they don't put on real wrestling shows. For the wrestlers, they don't put on wrestling shows. Again, I want to hear Jim Cornette's take on this, because it's going to be interesting. Kaylin and Angel Garza. Angel Garza just, he just wants all the women. He's spreading stuff. Um, and then Bianca Belair accused Zelina Vega of poisoning Montez Ford. But wait a second. That's attempted murder. That's weird. Then there was a cat. Again, going back to the aughts, the cat fight. Um, Kayla then was with the Hurt Business. Oh, we're going to investigate this. This this false Lucha Underground. Um, then it was Seth Rollins going to do a promo. Joe got in his face. Dominic came out and looked great. His punches need work. I'll tell you what, that flying cross body was amazing. The 619 was amazing. I'll tell you what. Dominic learned a lot in a very quick time period. That's going to be a fun match. We go back to fake WWE Lucha Underground. Uh, Dolph gets in. A and then once the Hurt Business speeds up everyone, because I got to my 27, magic 27th minute. Yeah. We're all ends that way. They tease me. Oh, they showed like. Like a bunch of people throwing Molotov cocktails at production equipment. 
Again, you need to call the police when that happens. But... <sighs> I hate doing this, but the tease of a new faction and it not being Imperium nor Undisputed Era kind of left me disappointed. And when they said Raw Underground, I'm like, ooh, this might be like Lucha Underground. It wasn't, though. And... I'm not happy with that. So this Raw, even though the first match was good, it went straight downhill from there. I don't think I've ever given a Raw any rating like this before, but this Raw overall was just a can of soup. And that's it. That's all I wanted it to be, too. Um, tomorrow, I'll be here live streaming. Again, Impact Wrestling lets me do a couple things. I've learned my lessons as to what I can and can't do about um, the Wrestle House. I've learned. I think they blocked those segments. Uh, Wednesday, I'll be doing my AEW review. I can't see how AEW is going to be anywhere nearly this, this miserable. Um, Thursday, I'm off. Friday's going to be SmackDown. I'm off for the weekend. Yay. Unless there's a hurricane show up and unless I have a hurricane party. So other than that, everyone else out be there safe. Again, check out cute kitty videos and, and that super villain that I somehow found in in a store here in Daytona Beach. Santa lives next door. Super villains sell shoes in like basements. I don't know. I'll see everyone later. Bye.